Hey guys, this is Aduda2 and uh, another go video on some basics here. Um, I've read uh, some of Bruce Wilcox's work and he has what he calls um, seven avoidance rules, seven things to avoid uh, when you're in contact with your opponent. Um, and I'm going to briefly go over those. Uh, I like the rules. Um, as, as for most um, things in Go, they're simply um, they're rules, but you'll find that as the game gets more complicated, uh, these rules, um, there are exceptions to the rules, and there are other rules that override these rules, etc. But um, I think these are good basic things to think about while you're playing. Um, and they'll, they'll make you stronger if you're able to spot these and uh, stop yourself from doing them. Okay. Um, basically, um, I have the, the board on a, my homemade 13 by 13 board playing with my double convex Yunzies with the bamboo boards and bowls, I mean. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll go through these seven uh, things to avoid uh, when you're in contact. And contact simply means one stone. Uh, it's touching another stone. So if this is the stone we're talking about, uh, any intersection uh, is contact. Okay. Even a, a diagonal from them is also considered contact. Okay. So uh, here's your first instance. Um, it's usually called pushing from behind. You don't want to push from behind. So if you're white, you're probably not going to want to play here because Black will just keep going, okay? But this instance is actually worse because what you're doing is black is going to play here. So what you're doing is that that is what um, Bruce Wilcox calls butting heads, okay? You don't want to butt head. Now, of course, when you do it, there's no head to butt. But if you could look one move ahead, you know what black's going to do. You're going to play here, and black's going to cap. So really, in a sense, you're initiating him uh, butting your head. He's actually, you're, you're making him stronger in this instance. You're pushing from behind and, um, you know, if you look ahead, you, you kind of figure out what his move's going to be. So that's not very good for you, okay? So this is something you want to avoid. You want to avoid uh, pushing from behind because at best, black will just keep going, right? At worst, black's going to cap you, okay? So this is called butting heads. This is what you don't want to do. Uh, this will come up in the game when you're pushing against each other, right? Uh, as you're pushing from behind, uh, they're eventually going to uh, cap you. So this is why you don't want to push behind, because you want to avoid this butting of heads. Okay? So uh, that's rule one. Don't butt heads. I'm going to cover these out of order, okay? So rule one, you don't want to butt heads. Okay? Rule two, you don't want to push on a link. This is, this is a link. Okay, this is black. Uh, we'll extend it down a little. So you're playing and you got your space here. Let's move them all over one or two spaces so we can see here. But we have a link here. Okay? You don't want to push on a link. Um, because what's going to happen if you play here as white? Well, you're going to play here, and then guess what? Black's just going to play here. You just made black stronger. You see what I'm saying? Um, I don't know how to explain it any better than that. If there's, um, well, you basically, especially like here, right? Something like this. If if there's a chance you can get a stone back here, right, and do some some messing around, that's good, right? But if you're going to play here, black's gonna fix right, or any of these moves, right, and then you're wanting to get a stone over there, it just got a lot harder, okay, so even uh, if we go to here, and white pushes here, and black's going to fix this, uh, it's now going to, I mean, you're, you're not accomplishing anything, right, this move doesn't do anything, but um, you're forcing them to make themselves stronger, okay? Uh, if you were to play a move like this, then he doesn't have to answer, right? And then um, you may 
play a move in here or something, and then if you can get like another move, you know, that's good. Right? Uh, obviously, it's just for example purposes, but uh, now you're in. Right? Uh, this would be a way of possibly playing light and throughout the game working towards your goal of getting over there. But if you just do a brute force, attempt to push, uh, all of that just goes away. Okay, so this is a, an example, and it's actually both. Because you're actually, you're butting heads ahead of the time, and you're also forcing them to strengthen themselves. So uh, n not pushing on a link is really a combination of you don't want to butt heads, and also you don't want to uh, push on a link and making your opponent stronger. Okay? Um, you'll see a lot of times you'll they'll have like a weak group with a bunch of openings and you just play and if you're playing for no reason they're just making themselves stronger okay you're working on that um, another rule is you don't want to kill yourself for no reason at all now this seems obvious but it's really not a lot of people think like if you look at this group here um, this white group is safe but a lot of times beginners myself included will play a move just to kind of see what we got right so black sees, okay, well these two stones only have two liberties. So let me jump in. Even though a little bit of reading will tell you, you can't really do any damage here. Right? You're going to play here. White plays here. Uh, white just captured your stone. Right? You took care of any possible uh, co-threat that you would have had later in the game. Right? Um, so you don't want to just do something like this, okay? Because really, all you're doing is you're strengthening them, you're giving them a prisoner, uh, you're not really gaining anything from this instance. There are instances when throw-ins actually do something, but this is not one of those cases. Your best bet would be to uh, wait until there's a point in the game where there's a co, or a co-battle, and you're going back and forth, then you would play here. Because then it's not um, entirely a, a waste of a suicide, right? Because if you get white to answer, then you can play back on your co. Okay, so you want to save these. Uh, there's nothing really he can do to you, right? There's nothing really you can do to him. So better to not, uh, you know, better save it until you can do something. Save your move on a, a good sente move or something like that, okay? So that's rule three. Uh, don't suicide for no reason. So, um, we went over don't push on a link, don't butt head, don't suicide. Now here's another one. Um, you don't want to take what nobody wants. Okay, this seems trivial, but uh, it's really not. Uh, I see this a lot. I actually, I did this for a long time until I read that it's probably not a good idea. Say you, uh, say you're here right, they have a bamboo joint, and you're here, and you're, you know, strengthening your area a little bit, right, um, I've seen people play here, right, push on a bamboo joint, you don't usually want to push on a bamboo joint, because there's no big deal, right, especially in this position of the board, okay, so, you push, right, okay, well, black's going to cause some trouble here, Okay, well, you push again. Well, it's not really that big of a deal, right? I mean, what are you, what are you gonna do? You, you, you still can't take it, right? Okay, well, you're gonna cause some trouble here. Okay, well, maybe you are. You know, now what are you gonna? I mean, just jump back there. I mean. You know, black getting this extra move, well, black could be like, well, fine. You know, maybe I'll cause some trouble. You know, black could fix this. Uh, you know, not too bad. I don't know. I mean, you can get into some complicated stuff with this. But generally speaking, you know, I don't know. Just to give you guys some ideas. Blah, blah, blah. Usually, when you push on a... Usually, when you push on a, a, a bamboo joint, you end up worse for wear. 
and it really looks like white is kind of worse for wear here, right? Uh, white has a group struggling to live, a weak group here, and a weak stone here. Where if uh, if black takes a stone, uh, you know, white's not even really fully alive over here yet, and he's trying to cut. I mean, in this instance, and in ma many instances, pushing on a bamboo joint is usually a bad idea because uh, if we go back to it, it took <clears throat> it took really three moves to do any damage, right? You got, you, you moved once, black took a big point, you moved twice, okay, so basically what you did was you gave black a free move, and normally you don't want to do that. And there are other instances in the game where you don't want to take uh, what your opponent doesn't, doesn't want. Um, if you're, well, I, I think that's probably the best example, so keeping it basic, we'll stick with that, but um, if if you maybe go for stealing a couple points in the corner while there's still a big move on the board, your opponent's going to take the big move and you had a waste of a move. So you want to only take what your opponent wants. Uh, also, if there's something you want and he doesn't, um, there's no hurry to grab it right away because he's not going to take it. So focus on taking what he wants. And then when you get what you think you can get from him, then go back and take what you want. That's just something to think about, um, you know, going through the game, uh, something to remember. Don't take what nobody wants. I know I'm not really doing it great justice here. I'll uh, probably come back for a, you know, a more detailed explanation on some of this stuff. Um, another one of his rules, don't extend when you can bend, alright? So black has a move. You don't want to extend. Don't extend when you could safely bend. Right? So you're here, white's here, black plays here, white plays here. Are you going to extend again? No. You're going to bend. Right? You're toward the end, you're, you're safe in bending. Pretty safe anyway, right? And if you're worried about it, you go one more. And then you bend. So the reason you bend is uh, these are game changing. Uh, modes, right? Every time you bend, you're going to want to keep going. So, uh, always bend when you can do so safely. Uh, same thing applies with uh, the double haunting, right? Are you are you safe in doing this? Uh, if you're safe in doing it, always do it because it's better. Okay. If you're not safe in doing it, obviously you don't want to do it. So. Um, Rule, I think, five, don't extend when you can safely bend, okay? Uh, extend until you're safe, and then bend if there's a push. Um, so, going through the rules again, you don't want to push on a link, you don't want to butt heads, you don't want to suicide, you don't want to take what nobody wants, you don't want to extend when you can bend, and then there's two more rules. Um, you don't want to bend against stronger stones. And I'll give you an example right here. Alright, so you're here. Black plays here. Who's got the stronger group? White does. Right? Because it's got more liberties. Makes it stronger. As opposed to blacks. Okay, so it's white's turn. White's going to play here. Black decides to cut bad idea. Why? Okay, because uh, one thing to avoid is you don't want to bend against stronger stones. Okay? Well, this was actually a cut, so let's just assume that it's black's turn and then black just bends on it. Okay? So this would be the, a better representation of the rule. You don't want to bend on stronger stones. Why? Because when white cuts, white is ahead of the game, right? Black has a weak stone, two liberties. White has a weak stone, two liberties. Black has a weak group, three liberties. White has a strong group, one, two, three, four liberties. So basically what you're doing is, as black, by bending on a weaker group, you're starting a fight at a disadvantage. Okay? Um, a good example of this is the basic pattern, attach, hane, extend. Why does black extend? 
Well, because it extends, now it's a stronger group, right? If white plays elsewhere, black can cut, and that's pretty devastating, okay? Um, if, if the pattern were attach, pawn A, and then black played elsewhere, you know, white would be able to play this move here. Okay, but even so, let's say black extends, right? And white doesn't do anything. Now this is a stronger group, and these are three separate white groups. So black can cut here or here. Uh, and the reason the cut works is because you're cutting from a stronger group. So as a general rule, you want to cut from a stronger group, and as a really for sure rule that's probably not ever broken is you don't want to bend against a stronger group because they'll just they'll just tear you up. So going over that again, here's a stronger group. Uh, you know we're here, black plays here. You don't usually want to do that. Okay, you don't want to bend on a stronger group because if they decide to cut I mean it's 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 pretty sucky for the for the bender. And then um, the other thing to think about is what's called stable groups and unstable groups. Uh, according to this theory, a stable group is a group with five liberties. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight. Right. So what does this have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this is a stable group, okay? Uh, this takes away one liberty. One, two, three, four, five. Still a stable group. And if you look at it, it is. Uh, let's, let's do this. One, two, three, four. Not a stable group. And you want to try to keep your group stable at all times, which would explain why black would want to, right, just for example, uh, by playing again, he now has one, two, three, four, five, six groups. He's now stable. And now this group is unstable. One, two, three, four. So this group would want to play again to make it stable. So a stable group is a group with five liberties. Okay? An unstable group is a group with four liberties. Why does this matter? Because if, if black were to play here, uh, this group now has three liberties and it's in trouble. Right? You, you'd have to play moves like this. Right? And the whole time, uh, this group is getting more stable, and uh, this group is not as stable. Okay? Um, so the rule is you don't want to uh, make excess liberties. So this is an example of that. What Black just did is he made way more liberties than he needed. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Way too concentrated. Okay? So... Um, once you get your five liberties, I guess here, I don't know, something like that. One, two, three, and since white can't cut this, right, because it will get caught in a ladder, this all is one group. It's very stable, okay? Now you don't want to make it any more stable. Uh, and also, you don't want to attack another person's stable group. Uh, for instance, if white has a group over here, this is super stable. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Black's not going to want to attach to this or do anything like this. It's just too strong, right? And white is not going to want to extend to make his group any stronger. Right? Because you, you don't want to add excess liberties. You don't want more than five or six, usually. So what White's going to do is he's going to do something to try to attack this black group. This black stone. Right? Like this. Or this. Uh, something like that. And try to build another stable group here while keeping his group weak and unstable. Uh, again, this is very basic. Maybe I'll, uh, if, if you guys like this type of thing, I'll throw some more examples in for you guys. Um, but, uh... This is just an idea of seven rules to avoid. You don't want to make excess liberties, okay? You don't want to bend against weaker stones. 
You don't want to extend when you can bend safely. You don't want to take what nobody wants. You don't want to suicide for no reason. You don't want to butt heads and you don't want to push on a link. So uh, I gave you one or two examples for each of those rules. Hopefully you can apply them in your game and it'll make you a little bit of a stronger player. Alright guys, sorry about the lag in videos. I've been uh, going through my finals week. And uh, uh, for a little hint of what's coming up next is I'm going to do a series on how to make your own billboard. So uh, I've been working on that. I've been buying materials. You see I've been uh, getting ready to, to tear it up. Got some tape and a marker and a, you know, wood burning equipment and some wood burners. So a little bit of a hint of uh, what's coming up. Uh, questions, comments, criticisms, uh, as always, I'm open to them. You guys have a good one. Later.